In the last workshop, we learned how to make a mesh. And in this workshop, we learned how to refine a mesh. You know, a lot of the work you do in a RAS model is in this step, what we call mesh refinement. Yeah, I would say like 80% of model development is in you know making sure that your terrain is solid and then making sure that your mesh reflects your terrain in a way that captures all of the hydraulic controls that is accurate, but also computationally efficient. In the last workshop review, I left you kind of with this cliffhanger of like, how does this mesh reflect this feature? You know, are we taking advantage of the subgrid bathymetry? And the answer is no. You know, what's happening with this feature? Well, does it see this ridge at all? Well, only a little bit in the volume elevation curves, but not in the cross sections at the faces. And so water comes into this face and it's gonna just pass right through that, not seeing that at all and leave this face. And so what we have to do is we have to align the faces with the high ground. And the way we do that is brake lines. And so we're gonna select brake lines here and I'll just start here. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow this high ground. And now you do wanna be careful that your brake lines don't have too sharp corners. If your brake line corners are too sharp, then it's gonna have trouble with the mesh. But okay, we'll just um, make that a brake line. And you can see that the brake line already has power. It has like magnetism on the cells. They're already starting to deform around it. But if we now right click on this and enforce the brake line, well, now you can see that, you know, where's the water gonna go? Well, the water from this cell, to get between this cell center and this cell center, now you have to pass over this ridge. And it sees that ridge because remember, there's a cross section right there. And so that is well aligned. Sometimes it can be advantageous to have a smaller cell spacing through here. You could say, go in and say, I'm going to edit my brake line properties and I actually want to, instead of 100, I want to have 50 through there. Now you have to be careful with this because I sometimes see very small cell spacings along the brake lines and then big cell spacings everywhere else. And what's going to drive the runtime? Right, the runtime is really going to be driven by that small cell spacing. But then in this case, we have a, a red dot. And what does the red dot mean? Well, the red dot means you've broken one of the rules. Usually it means you have too many cell faces. You know, the kind of easiest way to get rid of that dot is to add a computational point, but that's not reproducible. So it'd be better to use a break line or what you could do is you could add what we call near repeats. So if we select the brake line and then come in here to the brake line and choose its properties, um, we could say, hey, we want three near repeats. And then enforce it. And now things are getting a little messy around here. You're getting some small cells, but that does kind of push out the influence of the brake line. The other thing that you can use is a refinement region. And so a refinement region, uh, if you kind of follow its name, essentially the refinement region is like, it, you know, there is a community here where um, a lot is going on and I'm really interested in the results. And so within that region, I want more detail. And so I'm gonna go in and say, hey, give me, give me 30 by 30 in here. And then you'll get much more resolution in there. What's going to drive your run times? Well, this will drive your run times. This will drive your current condition and, and all of that. Um, but that's kind of a, a classical use of a refinement region. But there is another way that refinement regions are used that I use them all the time um, that I'll show you to kind of wrap up this video. Um, let me actually start a new geometry. And we're going to load the base and the channel so that I have a nice channel in my model. All right, so I'll go in here and let me say create geometry. And then I'm gonna go in and just make a big perimeter. And then I will use my computation points, my 100 by 100. So my question is, how good is this mesh for resolving this channel? Well, it's not great. There's only one or two cells on either side. We generally recommend, you know, like 
three to five for a small river, you know, five to eight for a, a larger river. Um, but the more important thing is that they're not aligned with flow. So this cell face right here is gonna be a nightmare because you're gonna get a lot of water coming into this cell face and then the same amount of water has to leave a much smaller cell face. And so that's gonna be potentially unstable. And so we actually wanna align these with flow. And so one of the things that you can do with the break line is you can kind of just kind of digitize a center line with your break line. And then when I enforce my break line, well, that's already better because even though we're using the same cell size, the cells are mostly aligned with flow. Uh, but the other thing we could do is we could come in here and we could say, actually, I want these spacings to be 25 and I want, you know, six near repeats. And if I do that, well then, you know, I've got an issue here, you know, but mainly we're actually getting a pretty good resolution of the channel if we want to do more detailed modeling along here. Um, but there's a trick here, and this is actually in, in the user's manual as the best practice for how to model a channel, but it's kind of buried in the user's manual, so a lot of people don't see it. You can use this technique with another technique. You can use the break line with the refinement region. Let me show you how that works. So this break line defines the center channel, but now we're going to go add a refinement region, and we're going to carefully, I'm not going to be that careful because I am um, doing a demo, but in real life, you're going to be careful and you're going to carefully kind of trace the high ground of the channel banks. And so you go in and you digitize your actual channel banks and we'll get around here. And, you know, the channel banks are pretty important in a subgrid model because you actually want to know, you know, when does water leave the channel? And you would actually really like to have your break, your cell faces really kind of precisely follow the channel banks. Um, and so now we have a region. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to enforce this region. And so what did that do? Well, that actually made the cells follow the channel bank. We now have cell faces along the channel bank. I think I'm actually going to go into, and I'll give it a perimeter spacing. I don't care what happens in the middle because something else is going to happen in the middle. Let's give it a perimeter spacing of 25. All right. And then we'll go in and we'll enforce the region. And you know that looks actually really nice along the cell faces. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in to my break line and I'm going to select it and I'm going to change the number of near repeats to some really large number. Uh, I want it to propagate almost infinitely uh, because now what happens is the refinement region will bound the near repeats of the center line. So now if I come in and enforce my break line, what will happen is it you'll get near repeats from your break line until you hit the refinement region and that will give you a much tidier model of your channel you know kind of embedded in your coarser model of your floodplain those are just some you know approaches and best practices to using the break line in the refinement region this is going to be a big part of what you do in your model to get the most out of your computational mesh I'm Stanford Gibson, the Sediment Transport Specialist on the HC RAS team, and these workshop videos are supported by the H Agency SET program.